Rubies have captivated human fascination for centuries with their deep red hues and undeniable allure. Known for their beauty and rarity, rubies have historically been a symbol of wealth, power and passion. However, not all rubies are created equal. In today's market, both natural and synthetic rubies are available, each with its own set of characteristics and value. This video explores the distinctions, formation, processes and applications of synthetic and natural rubies. Hi everyone, I'm Sasha Kareva and on this channel we talk about gemstones. Welcome! Natural rubies are formed under specific geological conditions. They belong to the corundum family, which is a crystalline form of aluminum oxide. The red color of rubies is due to the presence of chromium ions, which replace aluminum ions in the crystal structure. The amount of chromium and the presence of other trace elements can affect the color and quality of the ruby. Natural rubies are typically found in metamorphic rocks such as marble and basalt. High pressure and high temperature conditions are essential for their formation, often requiring millions of years. Major sources of natural rubies include Myanmar, Burma, Thailand, Sri Lanka and Madagascar. Burmese rubies in particular are renowned for their exceptional color and quality and high price as well. The process of mining natural rubies is labor intensive and often environmentally taxing. Once extracted raw rubies undergo cutting and polishing as any other gemstone to enhance their appearance and market value. The rarity and difficulty in obtaining high quality natural rubies significantly contribute to the high market prices. Let's talk about synthetic rubies, also known as lab-grown or cultured rubies. The most common question is the lab-grown stones and synthetic stones the same. I want to answer for all gemstones, not only for rubies. Yes, synthetic and lab grown is the same. So synthetic rubies are manufactured using various methods to replicate the natural formation process in a controlled environment. These methods include the vernal process, flux growth, and hydrothermal synthesis. The vernal process, also known as flame fusion, this is one of the oldest and most common methods for creating synthetic rubies. It involves melting aluminum oxide powder with chromium at high temperatures to form a ball, a large crystal that can be cut into gemstones. This process can produce rubies quickly and inexpensively, but the resulting gems often have telltale curved growth lines and bubbles. Flux grows. Uh, this method involves dissolving aluminum oxide and chromium in a flux a molten solution that allows the components to crystallize slowly. Flux grown rubies tend to have higher clarity and more similar to natural rubies in terms of their internal structure. However, they are more expensive and time consuming to produce compared to flame fusion rubies. Hydrothermal synthesis. Uh, this technique mimics the natural formation of rubies by using high pressure, high temperature water solutions to grow crystals over several months. Hydrothermal rubies are considered the closest to natural rubies in terms of both appearance and chemical composition. While natural and synthetic rubies can appear very similar to the untrained eye, there are distinct differences that gemologists can identify using specialized equipment. Conclusions Natural rubies often contain inclusions, tiny imperfections or foreign materials trapped within the gemstone during its formation. These inclusions can include tile needles, also known as silk, which create asterism star effect in some rubies. Synthetic rubies, particularly those created by the Vernel process, may contain gas bubbles or curved stripes that are not found in natural stones. High quality natural rubies are prized for their deep, vivid red color and transparency. Synthetic rubies can be produced to exhibit almost perfect color and clarity, making them visually appealing and often indistinguishable. 
from natural rubies to the naked eye. Natural rubies generally command higher prices due to their rarity and the labor-intensive mining process. Synthetic rubies are more affordable, making them accessible to a wider range of consumers. However, high-quality synthetic rubies, especially those created by flux or hydrothermal methods, can still be valuable. There are a few quite famous companies who produce high-quality lab-grown rubies, and the price can be several thousand dollars. Both natural and synthetic rubies have a wide range of applications, extending beyond jewelry to various industrial and technological uses. Because jewelry rubies are a popular choice for all types of jewelry, including rings, necklaces, earrings, and bracelets. The hardness, second only to diamonds, makes them durable and suitable for everyday wear. Watchmaking. Synthetic rubies are commonly used in watchmaking, particularly in high-quality mechanical watches, where tiny ruby bearings reduce friction and wear in the movement's intricate parts. Uh, last year, the deal decoration with calibrated natural rubies became a mainstream. You can observe it in many Swiss watch brands' collections. Uh, laser technology. Rubies play a crucial role in laser technology. The first laser invented in 1916 use a synthetic uh, ruby crystal to produce coherent light. Uh, ruby lasers continue to be used in various applications, including medical treatments, research, and holography. Scientific instruments. Rubies are used in the manufacture of certain scientific instruments due to their optical properties and hardness. For instance, uh, ruby windows and lenses are employed in spectrometers and high-pressure experiments. The mining of natural rubies often raises ethical and environmental concerns. In many regions, ruby mining has been associated with poor working conditions, exploitation, and environmental degradation. Initiatives like the Kimberley process aim to ensure that gemstones, including rubies, are sourced responsibly and without funding conflicts. Synthetic rubies offer a more ethical and environmentally friendly alternative. Lab-grown rubies do not require mining and have a significantly lower environmental impact. They also provide an option for consumers who seek ethically sourced gemstones without compromising on beauty or quality. Both natural and synthetic rubies hold significant value and appeal. Natural rubies with their rich history and rarity continue to be highly sought after by collectors and connoisseurs. Synthetic rubies, on the other hand, offer a more accessible and ethically sound alternative with applications that extend beyond the realm of luxury. Understanding the differences between these two types of rubies allows consumers to make informed choices based on their preferences, values, and budget. Whether natural or synthetic rubies uh, remain a symbol of beauty, strength, and uh, enduring passion. My company, True Gems, deals only with natural rubies. In case you are seeking the ruby of your dream, don't hesitate to message me via WhatsApp. Being an accredited gemologist and living in Bangkok in the biggest gem hub in the world, I know how to choose the ruby of your dream. Thank you for watching and see you in the next videos.